Hey, what's going on guys? It's Panda here. We are back for some more Katawa Shoujo. Are you excited as I am? I'm so excited right now. Can you... Can you hear the sarcasm in my voice? No, that, that's really mean. I actually am excited to do some Katawa Shoujo. I, um... Well, I don't miss it, but I know I'm very, very close to the end. And so, um... I sort of... I sort of want to get there. I want to get there. You know? I'm, I'm good this time, you know? I've, I've got my phone running. It's on silent. Got my timer on my phone running. It's all good to go. I believe we're running on all four cylinders here. Alright? Um... What else? Oh, I also have a, um, a nice refreshing glass of tropical punch here as well to, uh, quench my thirst whenever I need it. Hmm. Which would be right now. Oh, it's good stuff. Alright, I believe we should get into it. Enough dilly-dallying around. Last left off in City Rendezvous. circumstances different you can actually see the number but it's not blocked but for some reason I always get calls from blocked numbers I don't know who they are I've rung up a few and they've been from people I don't know and places I've never been so maybe they're just trying to kill me I don't know hello the sound of guy speaking I'm very formal I usually just answer with hey or what's up Dot, dot, dot. Oh, it must be Shizun. The sound of a couple of short breaths can be heard, but no actual speech is forthcoming. Hello? The sound? It's Hanako. Her voice is really easy to place, even if I've never heard it over a phone before. Hanako? Sorry, I wasn't expecting you to call. What's up? Uh, um, I, um, if, if you're not busy, I, I was wondering if you would like... Uh, to meet up? Yes, um, I mean, she sounds really wound up about this. I can hear muffled voices in the background and it's about time for afternoon tea, so I guess she'll want me to meet her at the Shanghai or something. It sounds fine. Are you at the Shanghai? Uh, I'm in the city. Marco's here? Alone? That's a surprise. It's a little wonder she's like this, but she's surrounded by people and entirely by herself. That works out well. I'm just wandering around there now. Where are you? Anako manages to stammer out the street name, address, and some basic directions to where she is. 123 Fate Street. It's not too far, so I agree to see her soon before hanging out. I look up to the sky. The summer heat is beating down. 
This is the first time Hanako has asked for us to do something together beyond a simple board game, and the first time, at least since I've known her, that she's come to the city by herself. Maybe this means that Lily was right. Of course Lily was right. Lily is always right. She's the backbone to your relationship herself. <clears throat> by the time I manage to stack her up to the cafe where Hanako is, wheezing away like an old man, I've started to wheeze again. Oh, look at that. I'm sweating so much that I feel like a melting popsicle, and I can barely hold the bag in my hand. I need to sit down badly. Why would you want to sit down badly? Wouldn't you want to sit down proper? Bad joke? No, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry! The tables outside are all occupied by busily chatting couples and girls gossiping between themselves. The contrast between the different age groups and fashions of the people here are... Uh, the people from the town near Yamaku are striking. Isn't this where me and Lily went? I scan over the people sitting at the tables, but I can't see Hanako. She did say she was sitting outside, so I must just be missing her. Not difficult, given how small she usually tries to make her presence. I look around again, more slowly this time, taking particular care to see if I can find Hanako's hat. It's pretty distinctive, and I'd be very surprised if she wasn't wearing it. There she is. Sure enough, her head is kept low, and the table she's sitting at is right beside the building in an inconspicuous corner. I walk up to where she is and make sure that I have her attention before I sit, lest I give her a scare. She notices me and gives a small wave as I arrive at her table. Uh, are you feeling okay? I try my best to laugh it off. Ha! <laughs> Am I feeling okay? I'm fine, Anarcho. <laughs> Doing so just makes me more out of breath. Oh, sorry, it should have been. Ha! I'm. <laughs> I'm. I'm. Oh, man. Just give me a second, just to catch my breath. I'm fine. I'm fine. If he's, that, if, he's that, if he's that out of breath from a sentence, man, I'm out of breath just from doing that. I'm very fit these days, don't mind me. Mm. Hanako nods, but still looks a bit put off. Now that I can get a good look at her face, something about her seems a bit different. I'm not sure if my eyes are playing tricks on me, but she looks kind of nice. She's always looked kind of nice. In fact, she's looked better than kind of nice herself. She's looked amazing. You love her, remember? Her eyes move upwards to look at me before quickly flicking down again. I begin to think this is going to be a rather quiet meeting, but a waitress thankfully arrives and sets down a cup of tea in front of Hanako. Hanako almost automatically turns slightly away and lowers the side of her head. It's an amazingly practiced motion and does a good job of its intended purpose, hiding her scars from someone who's leaning in close. Her right arm is still laying on the table though, which the scarring on the back of her hand is quite visible. It catches the waitress's eyes and I'm moved to quickly distract her. Excuse me, may I play some water? Good move, Sal. Good move. The waitress nods and gives me a couple of seconds to look at the menu. Could I have a mango smoothie, please? Mmm, it sounds delicious. She gives a nod before almost enthusiastically bouncing inside. Everything is so different in the city. And what more th one in more ways than one. Hanako looks back up towards me and adjusts her hat a little. If she noticed the waitress staring at her scars, she doesn't show it. Not coffee? I think I'd die from this heat if I had something like coffee right now. Resting my head in my hand, I look to my quiet companion. She seems taken aback. A very unexpected reaction to my lame joke. An unwelcome emotion bubbles up inside me as I realise her reason why. Unlike most in Yumaku, indeed unlike anyone there that I'm aware of, my condition goes beyond limiting the activities I can do, or to be more precise, breaching those limits that have much more grave consequences. Thankfully, it's something that's very rarely come up since I entered Yumaku. I thought that it was so rare that Hanako and Lily might not think of it at all. It turns out that I was wrong. Hanako slightly drinks her tea... Silently? I don't know how you slightly drink something. Hanako silently drinks her tea while I wait for my drink, confirming that it's the right temperature with a small sip before she begins in earnest. 
Now, I don't understand the small sip. Let's let's just ponder over this for a second. Now, if you take a small sip, I do this with hot chocolate all the time. Uh, I get a hot chocolate, you know, from a cafe or something, I don't know. You take that small sip. Now, yes, you're going to find out the correct temperature, but in doing so, because you're taking a small sip, your, t your lips are um, touching the liquid, as it may be, uh, longer than if you were to actually indulge in a uh, normal drink or gulp as such. So you're going to end up burning, if it's the incorrect temperature, you're going to end up burning your lip. Alright, I've just created a massive rant about absolutely nothing there. I'm just going to shut up now. I feel guilty, did I read that? Yes I did. I feel guilty for being the cause of an uncomfortable silence, since in the past I've been kind of hard on Marco for those. Eventually the same waitress as before bounces up, he handing me my drink. I get the change from my pocket and drop it into her waiting hand, before she goes off to attend another customer. My eyes linger on as she walks away. Do you think that she looks pretty? She got a fine ass. Just kidding. Hanako is following my gaze, her eyes taking in the waitress that served us. I can feel my blood slowly going to my cheeks as I rest my smoothie back on the table. Don't you just hate that when you when you know that you've gone completely red and you know, there's nothing you can do about it. I usually just try to bury my face in whatever utensil I have beside me, maybe my phone, you know, a drink. It still doesn't work though, everybody notices it. Oh. No, I can't really say that I'm really into that look. She just looked like... She just looked a lot like an old friend that I knew before my heart attack. Did you have many friends? I had a few at my previous school, though I wouldn't say a lot. The four of us just hung around together after school and stuff, so wouldn't you just say four? I had four friends. Instead of, I had a few, and then say, the four of us. I'm being pretty hard on herself today. Do you still talk to them? I shake my head. Nah, we gradually lost contact while I was stuck in the hospital. You're not saddened by that, or angry? Hanako looks genuinely surprised. I guess it's the right reaction. Well, life did move on for them while I was stuck in the ward. I was pretty sore about it at the time, but now it's just a bunch of nice memories. Besides, once I came to Yumaku, I found new friends as well. I'd still want to keep in contact with my old friends though. It's quite a whitewash of what my feelings were back then. I went through some dark times during my stay at the hospital and I, re and I really am glad that Hanako and Lily were around to help me after I left. Hanako blushes as we both get down to enjoying our drinks. She seems to have calmed down since I arrived and I've started to feel a little better now that I've had the chance to rest a bit so this is getting to be a nice outing already. Even if she's calmer than before, though she's still fidgeting a bit, she runs her hand down one of her bangs and as I try to think of something to say. That's right, I was going to ask. Hanako tilts her head quizzically like a dog. Hmm? They do it. Trust me. They do it. I didn't know you had a mobile phone. How'd you get my number? I've been stalking you on Facebook and Twitter and... L Lily g gave it to me. I should have guessed. You know, you could have just asked. I'd have given it to you. Want to exchange email addresses? <laughs> Anako nods, setting down her drink and fishing out her phone from her pocket as I do the same. That's an awesome looking phone. No shit, that actually looks like a pretty good phone. Looks like one of my old phones. I believe it was a... Samsung? No. Yes, it was actually. It was a Samsung. Flip top. Lasted for days. It's surprisingly the same model as mine. Pink though. Nice phone. She looks to me with a curious expression before noticing my phone and giggling. It's one of the very few times I've seen Hanako let her guard down enough to do such a thing. I didn't pick it out myself though. Oh? As I nod, as I turn my head quizzically, like a dog. It was a present, from Lily. I never really needed a phone, and I couldn't afford one. 
She bought me one for Christmas though, saying that we could use it to keep in touch. Lily must be like rich as hell, or her parents must be rich as hell. She did go to a private school, didn't she? They see each other basically every day anyway, both in and out of school. <coughs> then again, Lily does have her class representative duties and other friends that she talks with. It'd probably help for situations like this too, when she's gone away for a while. Lily's a very special person to you, isn't she? She is. I love her very much. Anako looks down and smiles as she thinks of her. None of my friendships were as deep as theirs, and I'd have to admit to myself that I'm getting a little jealous of their relationship. We tell each other our email addresses and thumb them into our respective phones, and I get Hanako's number from earlier and put it into my contacts list. Done. That makes three now. Three? Lily, Akira, and you. Ooh, what's Akira's number? Ah, Akira. She's an interesting person, isn't she? She is. She's also really nice though. Her suit makes her look lesbian. Or a bit cool. It is a pretty badass suit to be honest. I'm a little surprised you know each other well. What with her job taking up so much of her time? Hanako looks down a little and takes another sip of her drink. If I wasn't looking intently at her face, I'd miss a small smile perched on it. I guess when she knows so few people that she knows those she knows must mean a lot to her. How many do you have? What are we talking about? Sexually transmitted infections or contacts on my phone? We must be talking about sexually transmitted. About. Ooh! How? Buddy, you need to slow down on the uh, cushion for the pushing. I hesitate to go into them for fear of rubbing in the fact that Hanako doesn't have parents or apparently even close relatives. Two of those are Shizune and Misha too, which is another can of worms, which we shall not open today. I imagine that Lily would have more than both of us put together, probably. She's a pretty important person. Hanako gives a childish giggle and I can't help smiling. It's a good feeling that she's gotten this comfortable around me at times like this. I feel like I'm getting close to talking to her true self. Do you mind if I ask something that I've been wondering? Hanako shakes her head as she takes the last sip of her tea, finishing it off. Wait, what? Shouldn't that be nods her head? You know, sh if you shake your head that usually means you don't want them to... Okay. You don't seem very jealous of Lily having lots of friends. Don't you want to make some more friends yourself or get to know some of hers? I'm not jealous. I don't like people, so I don't mind not having many friends. I agree with you, Marco. People suck. Well, some people. Quite a few of the people that I work with suck. Awesome. That's really not the answer that I was expecting. She doesn't look fearful or sad as she says this, but rather quite serious. I.e. Nako rubs her arm awkwardly, having taken my quietness as a reason to continue. I'm not really sure what I should say, so I end up simply giving her my attention in silence. At middle school, I got bullied. A lot. I was called names and got excluded from work groups and sport teams. There were worse things, too. And that's what made you not like other people? She shakes her head. That was elementary school. I feel bad for bringing this up now. Adults have enough problem problems dealing with Hanako scarring. Children would be all the worse. I had assumed that the way she tried to make her presence not felt was just to avoid people staring at her. Or because she was afraid of them. Certainly not because she genuinely didn't want to interact with them in the first place as well. I notice a condensation from my neglected smoothie forming a little puddle around the bottom of the cup, so I take the opportunity to finish it off. As I drink, as so do I, <sighs> she begins to fiddle with her phone. It looks like she's remembered the people around her again and begun to tense up. It isn't exactly a cheap phone. I had to save up for it quite, quite a for, oh, I had to save up for quite a while to afford one when I got mine. If Lily went to a private school, she probably wouldn't have too much trouble getting one for a present though. 
Watching her fiddle with it gives me an idea. Hey Hanako, wait for me, I'll be right back. BRB AFK. I put the now empty cup down, slip my phone into my pocket and begin to move off, carefully stepping around the bag I'd placed beside my feet. Thankfully sitting around while talking to Hanako has helped me feel a lot better than before. Wait, wh what? Wh where are you going? Just stay here, I'll be back in a bit. Okay. As much as I'd have liked to have jogged back, I know full well that I couldn't. I end up walking back to the cafe, a little blue bag in my right hand. Naiko notices me quickly before looking as confused as she did when I left. I deposit the diminutive bag in front of her and sit back down. Is this? It's for you. You can open it. But, go on. She looks very unsure about it, but eventually gives in, slowly opens the bag and picks its contents out. Oh, it's one of those little things you stick on you. Yeah. A silver chain phone strap dangles from her fingers, ending in a delicate flower. Oh, just like her. It isn't exactly a masterwork of jewellery, but it's about as much as I could afford. Nako's eyes light up when she looks at it. It's the kind of reaction I was hoping for. The summer sun's light glints off the silver as it twists to and fro a little. It's not too ostentatious, but it still looks a little charming. I think it suits her well. Nako lowers the phone strapped to the table and looks to me once more. But it's not Christmas. I thought it might be nice to have something to decorate your phone with. But I don't have anything to give you. I told you, it's fine. Friends can give things to each other like this sometimes, right? Did I have enough pauses in that uh, sentence there? Yeah, I'm not sure. I told you... It, no, okay. Friends. Oh man, do you see me use that word again? Anako lowers her face so much that I can't see her expression. She eventually nods before taking her phone and fiddling with the strap to attach it properly. Properly. She looks to me and smiles as she holds her phone, now adorned with a little flower. Thank you, Hassan. Her smile proves infectious. Out of the corner of my eye, I notice a couple getting up and leaving. It reminds me that the bus back to the, to the town below Yamaka will be coming soon. I guess I'd better be going if I want to catch the next bus to town. You coming as well? Ah, y yes. She hastily nods before carefully putting her phone back into her pocket and getting out of her chair. I do the same and pick up the bag I'd left beside me on the way out. We walk side by side as we make our way to the bus station, exchanging no words between us. Narco's gaze is firmly locked ahead of her, though she looks very happy with herself. I'm not sure what I should say to her, but I'm also not sure that I need to say anything. The fact that Hanako is happy, and happy because of me, is enough to make the load on my arm feel lighter and further. I'm very energetic today. I feel very energetic. Mm. <sighs> Finally reaching the classroom. Hmm. Sorry. Let's start again, shall we? Finally reaching the classroom after the usual walk from the dormitories, I step inside. My eyes immediately turn to the third seat from the left in the back row, Hanako's seat. It's empty, and after glancing around the classroom, it looks like she isn't here yet. The two girls from the newspaper club are here, and the two seats to the left of Hanako's as are oh, as are Shizun and Mishiz, but that's about it. We exchange morning greetings before I take my seat. I have to admit, this is a bit of a relief. This gives me more, at least a few more minutes to think. Not that I haven't been doing so previously. Ever since our trip to town, Hanako's been on my mind. It's because you love her. I still don't know what to make of my relationship to Hanako. I just told you. I like her. I can admit that to my, much to myself. I want to protect and shield her from the pain she feels. Don't want to do that. I really don't think my feelings are those of just friendship anymore. But that said, I feel like I don't even know her. If I made a move on her, how would she take it? Is she in an emotional state that allows her to make a reasonable decision about a relationship? How would she cope with anything that might happen afterwards? There's also the possibility- I hear someone coming. 
but I'm just completely misinterpreting Hanako. Not a difficult thing to do when someone whose social skills seem to be so underdeveloped. underdeveloped. The sound of footsteps comes up to the door, making me perk up. See, I told you I thought I heard someone. Better not be Mattel. Oh, it's Mickey. Hey, Mickey. It ends up just being Mickey. Oh, see ya, Mickey. She barely acknowledges my existence when I accidentally make eye contact with her. I'm about to look away, but another person comes in not long after she takes her seat. Hanako! I feel myself freeze as I see Hanako enter. This isn't a rational reaction, but I have no idea about how I should act or what I should say to her. For a moment, our eyes meet. Oh, see ya, Hanako. Jesus, no one wants to talk to me today. And then, just as quickly, she looks away and moves to her seat without saying a single word. You know, since nobody wants to talk to me, I think I would welcome an interruption by Misha. Just saying. No, no one wants to... Fine. Maybe Yuko wants to talk. As is now usual for the period following classes, my face is very deep in a book that I find thoroughly uninteresting. Uh, more, um, more posters, is it? From 1734. Studying is not something that comes naturally to me. I didn't study a lot before coming to Yamaku, and until now, I've largely, I've largely, I've largely managed to coast through on, on talent alone. It's frustrating that I can't do really anymore. Judging by the faces of the other few students in the library, I don't think I'm alone in my distance. Misery loves company, I suppose. I decided to spend much time with Kanako since we haven't had lunch together for a while now. I may as well have spent the time studying, aside from pathetically small stuff. My head whips around in surprise, causing her to retreat in fright. That was bad timing. If I hadn't been thinking about her at that very moment, I probably wouldn't have been nearly so startled. Sorry, you just startled me. I find myself staring at her longer than I should, so I go back to a text lying on the table in front of me. I feel more like I'm just staring at the words rather than actually reading. I do that all the time. I get the feeling that I'm going to notice this as well, so I sign close the book. What's up? I was just wondering what you were reading. She looks a little downcast after my reaction to sitting here. Giving up on the prospect of getting any more work done, I get up and return the book to its place on the UI shelf. Just an English textbook. Does it tell? It helps me realise that I don't like English yet. She has to not paint me. I was going to say, man, Hanako gives me a small giggle. I may muse, I may muse on the strange state of our friendship, friendship, but I do know that such little gestures are things that I wouldn't see where I, where I not at least some distance closer to her than when we first met. I look at her for a moment, thinking about what I do and don't know about her. It's a slightly depressing thought. If I want to know more about it, maybe I should stop being so evasive about it. Talking with Lily as an equal rather than being constantly in fear of causing her to become upset worked, so f worked fine, so I should just try a, stra a straightforward approach with Hanako as well. <coughs> hey Hanako, do you mind if I ask you a question? Was that the question that you're asking me? I, I don't mind. I want to know what your life was like, your life before coming to Yamaku. You sound like a therapist, or the rapist. She hesitates. I briefly consider backing off, but she seems to be taking the question quite seriously. I sit and watch her, silently letting her take her time. She's not making eye contact with me, and looks almost as if she's arguing with herself into letting herself open up to me more. Her answer finally comes in a stiff, almost reluctant nod. She looks far more tense than she did before I'd asked. 
Okay, but, but in return, you have to t tell me about your life as well. I nod and follow her as she be begins to walk out of the library so we can talk. By now, most of the students have already left the main building, so apart from a few people hovering around club rooms, the hallways are largely empty. I guess we'll start with coming to Yumaku. Let's see, I was in the hospital where my, when my parents first told me about Yumaku Academy. Doctors told me I shouldn't go to my old school anymore. My parents agreed and persuaded me to apply for Yumaku, even though it would mean living away from them for the first time. It must have been, been hard for you. Well, yeah, I have to admit that it was. My parents both worked long hours and full, and full time, so having to live reasonably independently wasn't anything new to me. It was the fact that I was going to a school for disabled students that hit hardest, I think. And you? A small group of chatting girls passes us as we, as we near the stairs. With Hanako pressing herself tightly to my side until we reach the ground floor, she doesn't usually come this close while just walking in the school, so I'm left a little put off. Wouldn't be put off, I'd be happy. The staff at the orphan uh, orphanage offered me some options on what I could do. Middle school hadn't been good, so I thought that Yamaku might be better. It was isolated, and I thought it might be easier to get by here with most of the others being disabled. It's pretty ironic that the reasons Hanako looked forward to Yamaku are the exact reasons I hated the idea. To me, it felt like I was being shunted somewhere away from society, and everyone I knew to Hanako, that was probably an inviting prospect. I read that last part so wrong. My pauses were all over the place. What was life like at the orphanage? It was okay. The staff there were nice, and they took care of us. The children there didn't talk to me much, but I didn't really want to talk with them either, so I didn't mind. The orphanage had a little library, so I started to read to pass the time. The staff didn't mind it, because it made me easier to handle many of the other children. You didn't want... you didn't make any friends there? No, I think my life was on hold during that time. I knew that, but I didn't mind. To think her life was on hold for all that time, though, depending on what the fu when the fire happened, that was a huge chunk of her life. No parents, no friends, apparently no relatives. We walk through the door into the courtyard. I expect to need to avert my eyes from the sun, but it's now well into the sunset. Hanako's eyes keep flicking to me, so I look away from her for a bit. What was it like in the hospital? I quickly clear my thoughts and try to refocus them. I hesitate for a bit, but I now know I have to tell her. We're close enough for her to feel comfortable telling me this, so it's only a fear it's only fair that I reciprocate. It was okay at times, but at others it was pretty bad. At the beginning everyone sent their sympathies and came to visit often. It was just like breaking an arm or something. Meeting all my friends was one of the good times. Awanako came in often as well, more often than anyone else. No girl wants to hear about your past relationships, bro. Alright, just put that aside. But there were bad times too, when my friends slowly stopped visiting. I began to realise how grave my situation was. It reminded me that this wasn't just a broken limb, but that I was now a different person than before. Even the times Aonako would spend with me became torturous. By the end... Torturous? To torturous? I'm sure that's not torturous. Because that would be kind of weird. I'm just going to leave that word. By the end, we were reduced to silence, whereas before, she'd be talk talking constantly. But that's how Awanako always is. She may have been a fragile person, but she would talk constantly to try and hide that fact. Not about anything in particular, just talk. I think the three lowest points would have been where my parents told me I wouldn't be going to my old school anymore, my birthday passing while in the hospital, and when Awanako left for the last time. We leave the school buildings behind us as we begin to follow the main path through the gardens. There may have been the odd bystander in the school buildings, but outside we're practically alone. What was your middle school like? I liked it. I grew up in a really metropolitan area, and the middle school was nearby, so it was pretty crowded. I didn't mind, probably because I'm used to being in crowds and around lots of other people. I got good marks and played soccer with my friends. I spent a fair bit of time hanging out with them after school as well. 
Did get teased a bit over my hair though. Your hair? I grimace a little as I put my hand over my hair to cover it. I keep getting tufts and strands that refuse to flatten or stay where I wanted them, and my mother wouldn't let me just get my hair shaved. It'd have a habit of popping out, no matter how much I tried to brush it down. It still does a little. I was worried I'd get that reply. S sorry, I didn't mean to. I give a mild laugh and wave it off. Eh. <laughs> That's fine. I know it still does. It feels strange to have someone act so interested in my past. If it were anyone else, I'd think they were just acting polite. But that's something I really didn't think Hanako would do. Or if she did, she'd do it so badly that it would be obvious. <coughs> there are a number of girls in the common room on the ground floor, and Hanako presses herself to my side once more as we pass them. I expect her to break off, but instead she continues to cling on to me as we walk towards the stairway. Something about the way she's holding on to me feels different from usual. I'm left deep in thought as we walk up the stairs and down the hallway. It's only when we stop that I look up and realise that I've been following her without question. Why did we come to your dormitory room? Okay. Alright, we're going to stop that part there because I know exactly what's coming up next. Um as I've played this before. I've played the entire playthrough for um, Hanako before. Um, yes, I'm going to stop this part here. Um, the next part will most likely be pretty much the whole video will be blacked out because um, yeah. Um, however, I am going to continue this part straight away. So, I'll see you guys on the other side.